Greetings to all. I am Dr. Deepa, Assistant Professor of Botany, the Standard Fireworks Rajaratnam College for Women, Swagasi. In this video lesson, I am going to explain the reproduction in Marshilia. Marshilia reproduction takes place by two methods. One is vegetative reproduction and second one is by spore formation. First one, vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction takes place with the help of tubers. In Marshalia, tubers are produced in the rhizome and they store oil droplets. These tubers act as a perinatrium structure. They remain dormant during unfavorable condition. When the condition is favorable, the tubers germinate and produce new plant. The second method of reproduction is by spore formation. Marshalia is a heterosporous fern. Hetero means different. Here you can find the formation of two different types of spore. One is called microspore, another one is megaspore. The development of sporangium in Marshalia is leptosporangiate type. Leptosporangiate means the sporangium develops from a single initial. In Marshalia, the sporangium are produced in specialized structure called sporocarp. The sporocarps are attached to the petiole of the plant. External morphology of the sporocarp. In Marshalia, the sporocarp is bean shaped to ovoid nut like. And the sporocarp are attached to the base of the petiole with the help of small stalk. If we come into the color and texture of the sporocarp, the young sporocarps are green and soft. When it matures, it becomes dark brown and very hot. And the number of sporocarp usually one, but it varies from 2 to 20 based on the species. And the mode of attachment of sporocarp to the petiole also differ in different species. Look at the diagram. The first species is Marshelia polycarpa. In Marshelia polycarpa, Many sporocarps are attached on one side of the petiole in a single vertical row. And the second species is Marshelia quadrifolia. Here basal parts of the stalks of sporocarps are fused in groups and in turn each of these groups is attached to the petiole by a common stalk. And third species is Marshelia minuta. Here the stalks of the sporocarps though free are still attached to the petiole at a single point. And fourth one is Marshelia coromandelica. Here you can find the presence of single sporocarp. The sporocarps of Marshelia are attached to the petiole with the help of a long stalk that is called peduncle. And if you see the sporocarp, we can differentiate into two. One is called stalk and another one is a body. The stalk fuses with the body and it forms a distinct ridge and that is known as raphe. The distal end of the raphe is marked by one or two teeth like projection called tubercles. Next we are going to see the internal structure of the sporocarp. The sporocarp of Marshalia are surrounded by thick sporocarp wall. The wall of the sporocarp is very hard and highly resistant to mechanical injury. And the wall is differentiated into an outer epidermis, middle hypodermis and an inner parenchymatous zone. The single layered epidermis is made up of cuboid cells and it is covered with very thick cuticle. And some of the epidermal cells are elongate to form multicellular hairs. And in the epidermis, you can find a large number of sunken stomata. Second region is hypodermis. Here the hypodermis consists of two layers of radially elongated palisade-like cells. And these cells are compactly arranged without any intercellular spaces between them. And this is followed by two to three layered parenchymatous zone. The inner cells of this zone forms a gelatinous ring inside the sporocarp wall. The sporocarp receives food and water with the help of vascular cylinder. It is necessary for its growth and development. 
The sporocar receives its vascular supply from the vascular cylinder of the petiole. A single strand of vascular bundles enters into the stalk and it forms the stalk bundle. The stalk bundle extends through the raphe and then passes along the dorsal side of the sporocarp. So this strand is called as dorsal bundle. Again the dorsal bundle gives out a number of traces on both the faces of the sporocarp and these traces extend downward just like ribs. These are called lateral bundles or commutial bundles. The number and position of these lateral bundles roughly correspond to the number and position of sori. Each lateral bundle is formed dichotomously. The adjacent lateral bundles on the ventral side, they fuse together and they form a loop. At that point, there is a dichotomy and a small branches arises from that and enters into the receptacle which produces sporangia. And this branch is called placental bundle. Thus, the sporocar receives its vascular system with the help of four different bundles, namely stalk bundle, dorsal bundle, lateral bundle, and then placental bundle. The anatomy of the sporocar can be studied clearly by sectioning the sporocar in different ways. Assume this as a sporocar of Marshilia. Suppose we are taking the section by passing the blade through this way, we call it as horizontal longitudinal section. And suppose we are taking a section by passing the blade in this way, we call it as vertical transverse section. Suppose we pass the blade like this and we are taking the section means it is called as vertical longitudinal section. By taking these three different types of sectioning, we can study the presence of microsporangium and megasporangium inside the sores. The sores develop from the receptacle and the receptacle produces microsporangia and megasporangium. A group of sporangium we call it as sores. The plural form of sores is sore. In different anatomy, you can see the presence of microsporangium, megasporangium and the gelatinous mass and various vascular bundles which supply the vascular system of the sporocar. Let's see the presence of these structures in different sectioning in detail. In horizontal longitudinal section of sporocar, you can find the gelatinous ring which appears in the form of dorsal and ventral mass. So among these two, the dorsal mass is more prominent than the ventral. And look at the diagram. In the horizontal longitudinal section, you can find the presence of both microsporangium and megasporangium. And each sorus, it has its own receptacle, which contains one terminal megasporangium and two lateral microsporangia. And each sorus is surrounded by its own indusium. And the sore of two sides alternate with each other. Like horizontal longitudinal section, in VTS, that is in vertical transfer section also, you can find the gelatinous ring which appears in the form of dorsal and ventral mass. And here also the dorsal mass is more prominent than the ventral mass. And if you take a VTS in a particular plane, the sores can be seen either with only microsporangia or megasporangia. The lateral bundle extending from the dorsal to the ventral side of the sporocar and the placental bundle that develops from the lateral bundle is also clearly seen in the vertical transverse section. Look at the vertical longitudinal section of Marsilia sporocar. Here you can find the gelatinous ring in the form of complete ring around the sore. And if you take vertical longitudinal section, Exactly along the median, only you can see the megasporangia. Look at the diagram B. You can find only megasporangium present inside the sores. And if you take a section slightly away from the median line, you can see only the microsporangia. 
Look at the diagram A. In that, only you can see the microsporangia alone. That's all about the anatomy of Marshelia sporoca. Next, we are going to see the development of microspores and megaspore. The microspores are produced inside the microsporangium and megaspores are produced inside the megasporangium. Both micro and megasporangium are surrounded by sporangial wall. Inner to the sporangial wall, you can find a layer of tapetum. And you know, tapetum is a nutritive tissue. The primary sporogenous cells, which is present in the center of the sporangium, it divides in all planes and forms 8 to 16 spore mother cells. The spore mother cells are diploid and the spore mother cells undergo meiosis or reduction division and forms 4 haploid spores. So totally you can find 32 to 64 haploid spores inside the sporangium. And up to this, the development of microspore and megaspores are similar. After that, all the microspores of microsporangium is functional. But in megasporangium, only one is functional and the remaining spores degenerate to form nutritive liquid. The spores are liberated by the splitting of the sporocarp wall with the help of gelatinous ring. The spores germinate and form the gametophyte. You know, the gametophyte is haploid which develops from the spores. Spores are the first cell for gametophytic generation. Morphological nature of the sporocarp The morphological nature of the sporocarp of Marshelia is still under debate. Workers, they have explained their views regarding the morphology. All the views can be grouped under three different categories and hypotheses were proposed. The first one is leaf segment or laminar hypothesis and second one is whole leaf or petiolar hypothesis and third one is a phylogenetically synthesized new organ. According to the first view that is laminar or leaf segment hypothesis, the sporocarp is developing from the segment of the leaf that is called leaflet. The supply of vascular system to the leaf as well as sporocarp were similar to each other. Based on that, Puri and Gar and Gupta accepted that the leaf segment is similar to the sporocarp. And second one is a petiolar or whole leaf hypothesis. This was proposed by Johnson and according to this hypothesis, entire sporocarp is made up of, it's a modification of a leaf, not the leaf segment. And third one is a phylogenetically synthesized new organ. So based on the difference in the antigeny, that is development, Biopos proposed this view. The development of sporocarp and leaf is extremely different. So he is saying the sporocarp is a phylogenetically synthesized new organ. That's all about the morphological nature of the marshelia. Thank you.